Our match has been sitting here now for approximately 90 minutes and it's time to go through the process called sparging the ward. Sparging the ward involves taking the bucket of water, putting it into our sprinkler and running it down through the mash liquor. What that will do is take all of the sugars that have been accumulated in here, flush them out and we collect that to make our beer. The sparge water will start out at about 75 to 80 degrees Celsius. That's a little bit higher than, as you recall, the 63 degrees Celsius we're matching at. At the beginning, we're going to take one glass of the, of the liquor coming through and see the color it should be very dark. Our second glass will take about halfway through. That should be closer to the color of the beer you're making. And the final glass will take near the end should be just about clear. That would be the color of the water. We know at that point that we've finished. Normally at home, of course, you wouldn't be taking these, these glasses out to check. We're just going to do that so you have an idea of what the colors will look like. Are you ready, Doug? I'm ready. While you were mashing, you will also have been heating up some hot water to begin the sparge. We heat up our water to about 10 degrees Celsius above the mash temperature. So our mash temperature was about 63 degrees, and so we're going to heat our sparge water up to about 75 degrees. And just to prove to you that we can get this to 75 degrees, here we go. And here it is going to 75 degrees. Okay, we have our mash water up to temperature, and because it's both hot and wet, I wear these rubber gloves to protect myself from the heat and from the hot water splashing up. And what I'm going to do now is fill my very high-tech sparger up with this heated up mash water. So now Doug's just going to sprinkle some of the water over the grains. Notice the nice color of the grains we have here. We're keeping just a small head of water on top of the bed of grains, just so there's a bit of pressure to run through, not too much to flush it all out too quickly. We never want them to run totally dry. Now we've got a nice head of water on there. All right, let it run through. I'll try not to sparge you. <laughs> So as we look at our first glass that comes through, you can see a nice dark color. This would be more like coffee. Ovaltine is what it tastes Looks like. Good. Now. It's important at this point to resist trying to stir this. Uh, the point now is to let this water wash through the grains to pull out all of the sugar, but not to disturb the grain bed. If you disturb the grain bed, it might cause two things. One is off flavors, but the other thing is that it might fill up the holes at the bottom of your sparger, and as a consequence, the water won't run through. Then you've got a problem. Okay, sometimes what will happen in uh, your sparging is if you get what's called a stuck, a stuck sparge. What that means is the grains have clogged up the holes in the bottom of your mash tun. One simple way around that is just reach in with your spoon tap the bottom a couple of times. Often that's all that's required to loosen up the grains and get it to start to flow again. Let's see how we did. Good job, Pete. More water, please. Can do. We've stepped you through the sparging and mashing process. We now have a product that's looking very much like beer. If you recall, our first glass came out of early part of the sparge, very dark, lots of sugar, lots of color. Our second glass came about halfway through the mash. This one has got a little less color, a lot less sugar, and our final glass is almost like water. We've extracted virtually all the sugar and color we're going to get from our mash. Now we're ready to boil.